Welcome. In this video, we're going to teach you how to set up your uh, lab for doing a little bit of testing with virtual machines and doing some different security testing in a, a safe environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, get VirtualBox. This is a free uh, virtualization software that's offered by Oracle. Um, if you just Google for VirtualBox and go to the uh, downloads, in this case, I'm using OSX. Um, so there's going to be a a couple of tiny differences, whether you're using uh, OS X or Linux or uh, Windows with the, the VirtualBox interface, but it's more or less the same. Uh, so just follow along as best you can. Um, so I'm going to download this one for uh, <coughs> VirtualBox version 5.1.4 for OS X hosts, the 64-bit version. So I've got it downloaded. Went ahead and installed the, the software just like normal, uh, like you normally would for OS X. And then I'm going to pull it up. So once you open it up, you get the screen here. Uh, so this shows over on your left-hand side your different virtual boxes. I've got one that I've loaded in there already. I'm going to show you how to load in another one. Um, we're going to do some basic setup stuff with the networks and whatnot. So <clears throat> also for our uh, test attack machine, we're going to use uh, we're going to use Kali Linux, and Kali Linux can be found if you. Again, Google for that. So Kali Linux, if you go to the Kali Linux downloads, uh, there's this page here. So these versions of Kali Linux are the uh, the native installations. What we're going to want to do is download the uh, the virtual image. Um, so Kali virtual images, that will allow us to make a, a virtual box really easily without having to go through the whole install process. So what I did was I downloaded the torrent for the 64-bit uh, version. Um, so just went ahead, downloaded that with my favorite torrent client, and then installed it. And I've got the uh, the file right over here. So once you uh, once you download it, it downloads as a uh, .7z file. So I use the unarchiver for, available on the the Mac App Store to uh, to unarchive the uh, .7z file. Um, that creates a uh, folder for you that contains a lot of these .vmdk files. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up inside a virtual box. We're going to hit new and I'm going to make a uh, virtual machine named Kali. I'm going to set the type as Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit. Uh, so continue on that. I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, 4 gigs of memory. Uh, so Cal Linux needs a minimum of 512 megabytes of memory in order to function properly. Uh, I've got plenty of memory on this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and just give it four uh, gigs of memory. Uh, that way I'm nice and safe there with whatever I want to run. Uh, you can also go in here at a later time and change this if necessary. So I'm just going to continue on that. And then I'm going to go here to uh, use an existing virtual hard disk. I'm going to open this up. And I've got, so right here, if you look at all these different... Uh, files, the, the AMD64 is the one you want, not one of the ones that has the S001 or 00 whatever after it. So go ahead and click on that and click on open and then click create. So right now we have a Kali virtual machine right here. If we go ahead and hit start on it, it'll start up. Uh, something to take note here is that there is an auto capture feature that captures your mouse. Um, in this case with Kali Linux, uh, it's not going to be an issue, but with some other virtual machines, it will capture your mouse. And so what you need to do is you need to look at this bottom right-hand corner of the uh, the virtual machine, and that tells you what the uh, um, key is to press to escape that that capture the mouse to, to get your mouse back to use it for the AOR system. So I'm going to go ahead and close those out. The default login for Kali Linux is root with a password of Tor, that's T-O-O-R. Um, T O O R. So Kali is going to go ahead and start running. It's going to take just a minute to boot up here. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a, a snapshot of this virtual machine. And then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the menu bar and go to machine take snapshot. And so what this is going to allow me to do is if I mess something up within Kali Linux, I can just revert back to the snapshot. It's kind of like a, a, a backup of, of how it looked at that time. Um, so that's going to help us if we, we mess something up too bad. So I'm just going to say uh, clean Kali install. 
We're also going to do this for our other virtual machines because we are going to be breaking different services, going in and uh, messing with different files. And if, if we go and try something and something doesn't work, we might want to revert instead of trying to undo every, every step that we took along the way. So it's going to take just a moment to take the snapshot. So now that we have the, uh, the snapshot done, um, one other thing I'm going to show you is if we open up a terminal, I'm going to, uh, so right now I'm using, I have a, uh, the network settings for this. So if I go into settings for the Kali machine and I go to network, I'm using uh, network address translation. So basically uh, it, this is piggybacking off the internet from my computer uh, out to my router and out to my ISP and the internet. Um, so if I wanted to, I could do uh, like ping www.google.com. And this is going to allow me to connect up to google.com. So I could open up a browser, I could browse to Google to do whatever I needed to do. If I want to download some updates or uh, whatever to, to Kali Linux, I could do that at this time. Or if I want to install some additional files. But we're not going to do this, that right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit uh, Control C. And that's going to cancel out that ping there. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And go over here and I'm going to uh, shut down. So I'm going to save my state and uh, suspend the... Uh, my virtual machine. So it's saving as closed. So one other thing that I want to do is import another virtual machine. So I went to a really great site called uh, Volnhub. So Volnhub. So Volnhub has a lot of uh, vulnerable virtual machines that have different uh, vectors to get in through that you can test and try out different skills. Uh, and usually that's like a capture the flag kind of deal where uh, there's a, a file hidden somewhere on the computer that you find that file and it'll give you a little uh, congratulations message, hey, you beat this box. Um, so a lot of these, there's there's different vectors that you can use to uh, penetrate through these uh, boxes. Um, for the most part, the stuff that's uh, here on Voldhub is going to be uh, relatively safe to use. Um, there, there is the potential that someone could put something malicious on there. Uh, the uh, virtual machines, there are ways for them to reach back and, uh, and do some damage or do something malicious to the host operating systems. That's something to, to keep in mind. Um, I have not had an issue with anything on Volnhub, though. Um, but something that we are going to do, though, is we're going to change from using the, uh, the, the network address translation uh, over to using a, uh, a closed off network because something that does happen with these virtual machines is you are uh, intentionally creating vulnerabilities that if those virtual machines are open up to the internet somebody could exploit that virtual machine that vulnerability and then go in um, so this is going to add an extra layer of security to uh, to prevent someone from doing something malicious so the first virtual machine that we're going to download is going to be the uh, the pwn lab here so uh, just if you go to uh, search, if it's not on the, the front page for you, you could just search Pwn Lab. It'll be the only one that comes up. Um, so here on Volnhub, you can get walkthroughs. I mean, what we're doing right now is just a video version of one of these walkthroughs, basically. But uh, you can get these walkthroughs. Sometimes they're in a couple different languages. Um, but we're going to go ahead and hit download and then download the, uh, the torrent for this uh, vulnerable machine. So. I do have that already downloaded though, over here in uh, uh, PwnLab uh, underscore init.ova. So what I can do with that is just double click on it and open it. And what this is, is this is a, uh, a virtual machine that's all packed up into there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this to PwnLab underscore init, uh, just so I can keep track of it. Uh, you can edit it this time. Uh, if you want to give it more CPU cores or additional RAM or whatever the case is, it'll tell you also where the uh, the virtual disk image is located. Um, I'm just going to leave this stuff right here and uh, import as it is. It's also a good idea to reinitialize the MAC addresses for all network cards. Um, what that'll do is it'll prevent if you had some virtual machine that you've loaded in there and you reload something else into that place having a uh, conflict with your uh, your MAC addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import. 
It's going to take just a second here to import. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into my virtual box into the preferences. I'm going to create the network that we're going to use. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create a host only network and this host only network, um, I've already got one here. It's VBox net zero. You can delete these and create these by hitting the, uh, the minus button or the, uh, the plus button here. So I'm going to hit a plus. It's a VBox net zero by default. If you hit the uh, screwdriver icon here, you can change the, or you can change uh, some of the settings in it, like the virtu or the uh, the um, IP address. Uh, you can also enable an, a DHCP server for it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and what this will do is we'll go ahead and assign um, the uh, uh, assign IP addresses to the. Uh, virtual machines that get loaded up on here. Some of the virtual machines on Virtual Hub have DHCP enabled, uh, so they'll go ahead and they'll get an IP address automatically. Other ones you have to manually set the IP address or it might already be preset into there, so you have to figure out what the IP address is. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, the adapter, we've got um, 192.168.56. Um, that's the, the IP address range that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna um, just copy that and paste that over here. So um, the uh, the server address, I'm just going to leave that as, or I'm going to put that as uh, dot .10. Um, server, the mask will do uh, 255.255.255.0. That's a pretty common um, subnet mask. Um, so the lower address bound and the upper address bound. This is going to be all of the virtual machines on this DHCP server are going to get assigned something within this range. So we're going to do uh, starting at 100 to uh, 255. So 100 to 2, I'll just do 100 to 200. So everything will be within this range. So I'm going to hit OK on that. So I have VBox net zero. OK. So now I'm going to go into uh, Kali, and I'm going to do uh, um, settings, and in the network, I'm going to do it. Attach it to the host-only adapter, and that's uh, the VBox Net Zero. Actually, you know, I'm going to fire this up first and show you the the difference here. So, go ahead and uh, start Kali. So we're restoring our virtual machine. So. Right now, if we open up Ice Weasel, which is uh, Kali's equivalent of Firefox, um, it's essentially the same thing. You can use uh, Firefox plugins and whatnot in this, uh, no problem. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, google.com. And right now, Google works. We're good to go. Uh, just like we could ping it before. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this, go back to the settings, and go back to the network. And I'm going to change this to host only adapter. And so now we got uh, VB or the VBox net zero. And if you want to, you can look and see what the the MAC address is going to be of your, your virtual box on there. So I'm going to hit OK, it's saving the settings. So now if I try and hit refresh on this, well, it's cached, so I'll probably still get it. But see, right now it's uh, trying to retrieve it, but it can't retrieve it anymore. And if I try and do a uh, um, some kind of search or something, it's not going to work for me anymore. And also, if we go back to the, uh, the terminal again, we try ping www.google.com. It's not going to work. So it doesn't work. Um, so I'm going to look at ifconfig. So right now, my um, my internet address is uh, 192.168.56.100, or for my uh, IP address. Again, see Google uh, aired out now. If I switch this back to uh, to NAT or the network address translation, then Google would uh, or the internet would work again. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into the settings to Pwn Lab. I'm gonna go into network and same thing. Instead of using a bridged adapter, see right here I'm I'm bridging and I'm using the uh, the the Wi-Fi adapter for my computer. I don't want this. I don't want uh, this to be able to communicate with the outside world. So I'm going to go to host only adapter, 
I'm going to choose the only thing that's available for me, VBox net zero, and go ahead and look at the, uh, the MAC address of what it's going to be. Hit OK. So it saved it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this machine. And so this machine has started. And like I said before, uh, this has captured my mouse. So right now I'm trying to move my mouse, but I cannot move my mouse until I hit the left command button or the, uh, yeah, the left command button. Then it'll give me back access to move my mouse again. But if I click in here again, I'm going to lose control of that mouse button. So left command. So that works just fine. Um, I booted up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this because we don't have the... Uh, the login for this, we could try, you know, root and tor, one of the default uh, Linux passwords, but yeah, that doesn't work, didn't expect it would. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close this and just save the state. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start it again, I'm gonna start this in headless mode. So what this is doing is it's running the uh, the machine, you can see right over here in this tiny little uh, screen capture that that it's running and it's doing something, but uh, but we don't have access to it uh, like we did before, which is you know usually going to be the case when you're doing some kind of penetration test is you're not going to have access to the actual computers that you're trying to penetrate. Otherwise, it would make your your test very easy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a net discover to figure out what the IP address was assigned to uh, Pwn Lab was. So net discover, and I'm going to look at the options here for net discover. And so I can do a, uh, a range. If I just ran net discover, it's going to go through the whole range of uh, IP addresses, um, which that'll take some time. So I'm just going to do a net discover. Uh, and I'm going to set the range. So tag R and then 192.168.56.0 slash 24. And that will check everything in that range. And if we go back and we look again, at the uh, settings for this, um, we can see what the MAC address is, and we can see that this has been assigned um, the dot uh, 101. So our Kali machine is 100, and then our uh, other our Pwn Lab virtual machine is dot 101. And if we wanted to, we could. Uh, we could shut this down, shut this virtual machine down, and try the net discover again, or try pinging it, and and it wouldn't uh, do anything for us. So we could verify that, but I'm certain that that's what this is. So we have the uh, the basics of our lab set up right now. So uh, I'm gonna sign off from here, and uh, we'll continue on with another uh, with a tutorial on how to actually get in and uh, try and mess around at the lab.